While the U.S. is still using the English system for many measurements, there are more and more examples of the gradual acceptance of the metric system. There's only one base unit for each type of measurement. See the example for length shown here. Metric, one measurement. English, many. The metric system is popular because it is a base 10 system that allows easy conversion among different metric units. There are three basic units of measure. For length, meter. For mass or weight, gram. For volume or capacity, liter is the basic unit measurement. If you measured the capacity or volume of this large tank in the base unit of liters, it would create a measurement with a lot of digits. If one needs a larger or a smaller unit in the metric system, you simply add an appropriate prefix to the base unit. Here we have the common metric prefixes. As you move to the left, each successive prefix is 10 times greater to the one on its right. 10 times 10 times 10. As you move to the left, each successive prefix is one tenth as much as the one on its left. A tenth of a tenth of a tenth. Here are the abbreviations for these common metric prefixes. K for kilo, H for hecto, DK for deca, base doesn't have a prefix, deci is D, centi C, milli M, and if we skip over two spaces, each indicating a power 10, which are not popular prefixes, and they are seldom shown in a metric prefix chart, we jump over to micro, abbreviated with an MC, sometimes the Greek symbol mu, and just as a point of interest, the two missing place values are decimilli and centimilli. Using grams as the base unit, look how the base 10 system works for the prefixes. Each is a power of 10 greater starting from the bottom. Each is a multiple of 10 as we go through. These relationships can be converted with the base having a 1 shown here in yellow. Instead of 1 decigram equal to a tenth of a gram, multiplying both by 10, it now converts this into 1 gram is 10 decigrams. 1 gram is 100, which came from multiplying both of these by 100 to give us an equivalent expression. We often don't see these kinds of relationships and have to rely on the prefixes. Let's see how it is possible to convert metric values using the dimensional analysis. Here the problem asks to convert 1.5 meters to centimeters. We will start by expressing the given value as a fraction with a denominator of 1. Next, set up the foundation for the conversion fraction that will convert meters to centimeters. Whenever you multiply fraction, units cancel out that are on both the top and the bottom of the fraction. Since we want to cancel out meters, we will place the meter value in the denominator of the conversion fraction. Conversion fractions are fractions with the same measured quantity on the top of the fraction as well as on the bottom but with different units. 
to find an equivalence between meters and centimeters for this problem, determine which of these is larger. We'll use our table of prefix values and the one that is left most, in other words, furthest to the left on the prefix chart, is the largest. We have meters, which is a base, and centi. Note that since we have our base furthest to the left, that's where our one will be. The other number in the conversion factor is determined by counting the number of spaces between the two measurements. Each space is a multiple of 10. Note there are two spaces between base and centi, each representing a power of 10. The missing conversion factor number then is found by multiplying 10 by 10 or 100. Thus, we have equivalent values. Another option is to use a chart shown here for the base gram, but represents the prefixes for meters as well as liters. And here we have 100 centigrams equals 1 gram, which is also the same for 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. Expressed as a conversion factor fraction with the same quantity or equivalent quantity on the top and on the bottom, this fraction has a value of 1. When we have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, we can cancel them out. So we can see our meters are canceling out. Then going ahead with multiplying fractions, which requires multiplying the numerators together for the new numerator, multiplying the denominators together for the new denominator, and then simplifying by dividing by 1, we end up with an equivalent value of 150 centimeters using dimensional analysis. In this problem, we are asked for an equivalence in micrograms to the given milligram value. Start the process of dimensional analysis by expressing the given value as a fraction with a denominator of 1. In dimensional analysis, we'll multiply this given value by a conversion factor fraction that cancels out milligrams. To do this, the conversion factor fraction needs to have milligrams in the denominator. To determine a conversion factor between milli and micro, the units that are given here, we'll use the metric prefix chart. Which is larger, milli or micro? The one that is leftmost on the prefix chart. Milli is to the left of micro. That's where the one will go. There are three spaces between these two measurements. Each space has a multiple of 10. The missing conversion factor number then is multiplied by itself three times, in other words, 10 to the power of 3, 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. Thus, 1 milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. Using this relationship, we can complete the conversion factor fraction by placing milligrams in the denominator, as previously discussed, equivalent to 1,000 micrograms in the numerator. This fraction here has a value of 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, but does allow us to convert our units. Canceling out any common factor, which in this case is the micrograms in the numerator, over the same factor in the denominator of micrograms. Multiplying numerators together and denominators results in 2,500 micrograms over 1, which is 2,500 micrograms, the equivalent to the given value.